All right, green, white, bow. Hey, Mike Golia, thank you for thank you for the third of your. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Bow in this case refers to the card Vivian's Arc Bow here, which allows you to discard a card. And then look at the top X cards of your deck and get a creature cost X or less from among them and put them onto the battlefield. Notably, the bow has great synergy with Night Pack Ambusher because bow allows us to get creatures on our turn while not casting a spell, so we still trigger the Night Pack Ambusher. Speaking of powerful synergies, Night Pack Ambusher has absurd synergy with Tolsmir. So Tolsmir notably gives you three life and has your wolf fight every time any wolf enters play. It's just until M20, there weren't other constructed playable wolves in the format. So when you have Tolsmir out, Night Pack Ambusher fights when it comes into play. Night Pack Ambusher also makes Tolsmir's wolf a 4-4. Tolsmir also makes all of Night Pack Ambusher's wolf. Wolves gain life and fight things if you want. Vivian Champion of the Wilds also gives us nice synergy with Night Pack Ambusher because it gives our cards flash so we can not cast our creatures on our turn and then get those two two wolves going. Hey, KYP. Thank you for the half a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed the YouTube stuff. Thanks for keeping me around. And the Booty Snacks. Dropping off that Prime again. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. We've also got a few other reasonable creatures here. One of the things I really like about getting to play Vivian's Arcbow is you'll note here I've got eight accelerants here at the bottom end of my curve. And normally, like, these kind of cards suck to draw in the late game, like on turns four and five plus. But with Arcbow, we can convert these bad creatures into something potentially much better. We've got a couple of Tristanis in here as a good top end bomb that fights the mass manipulation decks. And I've got a couple of Cavalier of Dawn in here as just a kind of solve target problem style card. So good to have a, a reasonable catch all there. Let's uh, dive on into some matches here and see see how this one goes. I think Bag of Holding is largely unplayable in a format where three mana Tefri exists. Because in Magic, when a card changes zones, it's considered a new instance of that card. So when Bag of Holding gets bounced, all of the work it's done just goes away. The sand is awesome. Yeah, the, the Cavalier cycle in general, from the art to their effects, it's just really just all fantastic. I get to gain life off my dual lands now. That's so exciting. Guild the Eights ain't got nothing on these, chat. <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you. Oh, you've seen puppies? How fitting. All right, let's show him who's boss here. Send a, send a message. Send in the Arboreal Grazos. No, I, no idea, man, for life. I'm really bad at predicting the future, so generally I don't try to do it. Yeah, I, I agree, Detroit. This deck, this deck's being pulled in fewer directions. And like, adding a new set to the format allowed us to kind of flesh out those last few slots without going into a third color, which is nice. We gained, we gained more tools than just green white, basically. You missed the free attack and vigilance, good call. Apologies. Chad is, Chad is completely correct. I punted. All right, so let's do this and see what we find. You fight like a city. Wow, that's a tilt. Um. So do I just toll smear now and like eat the eat the paradise dread? This card's probably gotta go. What's the what's the difference between five and six mana next turn? 
What's the what's the difference between five and six mana? Is there a meaningful difference between five and six mana? I don't think there is. I'm just gonna go ahead and play the Tulsmere. Smear. Yeah, Reef Reef destroys Reef Reef draws a lot of cards unchecked. What do you think is the best deck in your opinion? All the decks that were good last season are still good now. Esper Control, Nexus, Esper Hero, Mono Red, all those decks are still great. Until until proven otherwise, those are the go-to good decks in the format. I do I do love that we get foil tokens now. It is a it is a treat. J Bags, thank you for thank you for doling out some sub gifties. I appreciate the support. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic uh fantastic Thursday wherever you're at. Oh gosh. If we if we bow into a uh, a night pack ambusher here. Gobble gobble. And then end of turn, the night pack ambusher is gonna make a token, and that token's gonna eat the land war elves. Yahtzee! Remember, magic is a skill game that in no way resembles gambling. Low, low variance, high skill. Oh, I love, I love, I love when the sweet deck gets to do its thing in the very first game you play. Just like, and for my next trick. How are there not firework bits for the 4th of July? Asking the real questions. Hey, German Space Ace. Thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Spin Zeveal. Oh, oh, did you look at that? Another Night Pack Ambusher, eh? Thunk. Mmm. <laughs> tasty, tasty. All right, so uh, they're probably... They're probably a, uh, a take control of your stuff deck, right? Thorn Lieutenant's pretty bad here. Cavalier seems fine. Bring in a couple of Veil of Summers because this counters uh, Bass Manipulation and a Transing Melody. This also good there. Yeah, like, this card was, like, close to playable, constructed playable on its own. And, like, this card just, like, takes it and cranks it into Overdrive. Mmm. Cage, Cage is bad with this, huh? Yeah, I should probably just have a fourth Brontodon. I wanted another, I wanted a card that was good against uh, Frenzy. Yeah, yeah, I'll swap this to another Brontodon. That's a good call. Uh, I would be surprised if they do ban for life. <clears throat> it's like not amazing, but it's fine. Yeah, feathers in the deck queue. As always, for people that are new to the channel, um, everything we play here is basically viewer driven. So if you're interested in seeing a particular archetype, um, you can submit it on my website using that form there. Also, if you'd like to see what decks other people have already submitted, you can uh, you can check out the deck queue page on my website as well. Always stay very organized around here so people know what to expect and when. That's incredibly rude. Yep, yeah, yeah, I'm 21 live on Arena. Uh, te technically, it went live on Tuesday, but most people couldn't get in until Wednesday. Hey, Heldrake, thanks for sharing that Twitch Prime this way this month. I appreciate that. Oh, I love when my divination comes with a 2-1. It's my favorite. Would you like to bounce my divination? Wow, you would. Okay, deal.
Thanks. I appre I appreciate you. We're going to curve Tolsmere into Night Pack Ambusher again here. Hopefully, hopefully they tap this for mana again. We just have to play Tolsmere and just like put them super far behind. have a plan um does this smell like fish to anybody else anybody else anybody else think this smells like fish so i feel like if this is a frilled mystic i would like to double spell here yeah let's start by attacking the tiffery i like that line so the question I have to ask myself is, I'm pretty sure they're gonna Frilled Mystic either of these. So I have to ask myself the question, which do I want to resolve more? I think I'd rather Bow resolve more. So I'm gonna lead on Vivian. MTG Bruise. Thank you for the entire year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Have a sword to go with your shield. And remember, Tefri does not slow down activated abilities, so Arcbow's still gonna get to still gonna get to work at instant speed, even though this is in play. I think I'm just passing here. I can't, I can't eat this even though it's tapped because Shalai is giving it Hexproof. Yeah, we actually played Grohl Blood Sun with the Lotus Land yesterday. You can find it on my YouTube channel and my website. Uh, video standard at the top, magicesports.net. So, here's a fun thought. If I Cavalier of Dawn my bow, they don't draw a card and I get a 3-3, three, three. is that worth it? They don't draw because their only target is removed. Tristani means Tolsmere would kill Shalai. Yeah, I think I think I want to kill Shalai because it makes Tolsmere better. And and I get to keep my bow. Like they have they have a full grip of cards here, so like giving them one more card isn't that big of a deal, I don't think. I have no idea if Teamer Elementals is good. Anybody, anybody who tells you they know with certainty any particular thing is good or bad in this format is lying to you or just doesn't understand. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good one. Oh, it doesn't hit lands. So that's unfortunate. Someone commented the standard decks page on website has been updated. That's that's correct. There's only just the Esper Party bus on there. That's the only deck we've played a good a good bit of at this point. The rest of the rest of those pages will get flushed out as I gain more experience in the format. It's uh it's unfortunate that they put that under there because now when my cavalier dies, I'm not gonna be able to uh 
Oh, I guess I technically should kill a 3-3 here, huh? I'm not going to be able to replay the bow. It's going to get back to my hand. These are Vigilance. Let's smack in. So I do get to get a bow back. But I can't recast it here because of Ixalan's Binding. Mm, that's true. It protects killing the Mystic, prevents them from bouncing it with a, a Time Raveler later. It's a good, good call. Ah, uh, since the core set. These are in, uh, these are in M M20. Alright, so the fact that they're playing Tristani, that implies that they are not a, um, that implies that they are not a mass manipulation deck, so that's good to know. I'm gonna hold on to that for now. This kills the Lyra, but do I care about that? So I can do this on my turn after I've after my triggers resolved. So that way they don't get to untap with counter spell mana. I think I I think I think I just eat this, honestly. Yeah, the two the two tokens can eat Lyra next turn, that's true. Tolsmere, Tolsmere's Wolf also trades one for one with this because it's a 5-5 five five from these. First Strike does not apply to fighting. I'm gonna bring in a couple of Brontodons post board. I was saying the Graft Digger's Cage was silly, and I wanted that Graft Digger's Cage in order to um I wanted the Graft Digger's Cage in order to in order to deal with um Frenzy. So I think I might put a couple Knights of Autumn in my sideboard. So that gained them a bunch of life, but that's fine. We're pretty well positioned to go long here. It's like every turn we get two, two, four, four wolves that fight things and gain three life. And they're playing Tristani, which implies they're not playing mass manipulation. So like they're the card I would be most afraid of at this position is mass manipulation. And that's not a card that's in their deck. I mean, at what to Kotli Honor Guard deck am I boarding in Knight of Autumn against? Deal. Mm, 
time wipe could be a reasonable one. Time wipe's a reason to be conservative and hold things back in my hands here. I'm not even sure I'm playing the Tulsimir. I think, I think because time wipe's a real consideration here, I just, uh, I just like hit them and they like make two four fours and pass. I don't, I think, I think making two four fours is better than spending a card. This, this seems fine, right? Like why, why am I in a rush? If they, if they didn't have excellence binding on my arc bow, this game, we'd be so much further ahead. We're still ahead right now, but we'd be further ahead if they didn't have binding. So I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring in a couple of Brontodons for game three for sure if it happens. Manny Noonins, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Hope your Thursday is treating you swell. Thanks for keeping me employed here this month with that. Alright, so that's gotta go. If baffling into their deck, baffling end is really mad against me. Gobble, gobble. So their hand obviously isn't very good right now. So I'm just going to guaranteed kill this Tefri. Like I could attack them, but I just don't want them to draw a card here. Kind of surprised they didn't make this a 5-5. Five five. I guess they have tokens that can block. Oh, I could have attacked with the 4-4. Four four. I forgot I could attack with the 4-4. Four four. Man, Ambusher is really aptly named alongside Tulsmere. Like, what if, what if every turn I made things that eat your creatures? Casual up to 41. Here, move. This, this is all I got. This attack, it wasn't lethal. We're good, we're good. It wasn't lethal. All right, how about some more four fours? All right, do you have a time wipe? It's not a time wipe. It's not a time wipe. You have a uh, fish as your last card. Frilled Mystic. I mean, aside aside from Baffling End, I don't think they really made that odd of choices. It's a pretty good last card to have. I think they're still dead. I don't know. Figure it out. Night Night Pack Ambusher is just kind of everything I want to do in a Magic card. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's like, it's flashy, wins the game on its own. Let's get this Graft Digger's Cage out of the sideboard of our deck where it doesn't belong and put a couple of knights in here. Knight of Autumn. If you have Bant Bow from last season when we were playing it, this green-white bow deck isn't that many wild cards. It's like three mythics and five or six rares from the new set. There is not a foil knight back ambusher. I felt personally attacked when I found out.
Pretty easy mulligan there. Yeah, this is, this is like, I'd like an accelerant, but this is in the range of keepable, I think, especially on six. They had, they had their elves on one. This deck has eight turn one accelerants, but we're not fortunate enough to have one here. How it goes sometimes. They don't have another dork here, we're okay. Right on, right on time, Arboreal Grazer. Welcome to the party. Wild animals I love. People, have you ever lost a home? Okie doke. Okie doke. Do I just cash this in? She's she's dead, right? I think I just cashed this in. I think this is just like green divination. Let me show you what was lost. Hey, Zegol, thank you for the 12 months of support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, 4th of July wherever you're at. Um, They're probably a fish deck, right? Do we think they're a frilled mystic deck? I'm going to cast this now. I think they're probably a frilled mystic deck and I want to cast this now. If they have Nyssa, yeah, playing the Night Pack Ambusher out proactively is worse when they have Nyssa because it means I don't get to eat their land inside of combat, but... Yeah, maybe that was a bad, a bad line. I probably could have eaten this. Hopefully we hit an untapped land to get to Tulsmear and eat this forest next turn. Come on, untapped land. Come on, untapped land. That's probably the game. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty dead from here. Hey, Gunthor, thanks for the two thirds of your support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thorn Lieutenant is pretty bad against these other mid range decks, mostly there for the aggro matchup. Cavalier's fine, that's fine. Um, a couple of Affleyan, probably okay to round out. Beyond Sadistic, thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Seems reasonable. So it's actually kind of funny. This hand's like better on the draw than it is on the play. Because on the play, this hand doesn't baffling end their two drop mana dork on curve, but it does baffling end it on the curve on the draw. I think, I think this is still keepable. Again, it sucks to not have an accelerant, but I don't think this is like bad enough that I like throw it back. We kind of like them to have light royals on one so we can baffling end it. Love to draw Arc Bow or an Accelerant here. Swing and a miss. Let's see if you're worth it. All things begin. Perfect. And end. This feels, uh, this feels familiar. Anybody, anybody else getting familiar feels here? I think I, think I run back the down tick again. You can still 
walk away. Oh, tilt. Hey, Gix. Thanks for 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Game game one, they had Land War Elves. Not Incubation Dread. In this game, they're going to have Frilled Mystic, and I didn't play around it. I should technically play this before I play my land drop. So that way when it draws me a forest like that. I play the one they know about. Yeah. If I'd have played around this, this game would be in a, an incredible spot. Well, I guess they would have countered this, but that would have been fine, right? Pretty okay with this trade. They're a growth spiral deck. That's interesting. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. Starting over is the only way. Yeah, they missed a land and we took out their incubation druid. So, like, that's nice. I cast this before blocks because if it ends up a 4 3, I want to I want to block. I always survive. Yeah, it it can trample, but I'm still I'm still pretty okay with the straight, I think. Like, all, all things considered, that trade seems fine for me. Do I want a Tristani here? I think I want a Tristani here. I just want to, like, not die by mistake, basically. Like, my hand, my hand's got a lot of gas in it, so I'd like to just, like, trade off aggressively here, basically. Probably see this, fight this, or this, fight this. It lets me kill this on the backswing, though, so I think that's still fine for me. Get him. What? I would say that attack is super aggressive. Uh, yeah, it's pinned. It's pinned in the subs discord in the arena channel. That block lets Toll Smear kill their thing. Which is nice. I'm going to hold on to this land in case we draw Arc Bow. Gobble, gobble. I'm gonna play. Not gonna hold two lands. If I draw a bow, I'd like to activate it for six of the turn I draw it. We have uh, Cavalier hanging out. Should they draw a Planeswalker bomb, which is nice. Yeah, we're turning turning the corner really solidly here. Just like don't have to play any more spells and we get to night pack ambusher every turn. This is pretty good. Um yeah, I think I, I think I just play second Tool Smear here, right? Because the wolf from Tool Smear is going to be is going to be a four four, which will eat this, and then I get to attack them. Yeah, yeah, I think I think starting starting at five is where it gets good because it gives you a good number of looks, and all of our all of our really expensive threats here are five drops. All of our our big bombs, if you would. <sighs> do I want this baffling another draw? Yeah, I think I probably do. Let's do it. Hopefully we can have an accelerant on the first turn of the game this time. We had two games without it, and we have eight of them, so. Elf, elf or grazer to open, please. Which cavalier is my favorite? Uh I think I was kind of this is fine. I was kind of I've kind of been underwhelmed by the green the green cavalier. 
and the blue cavalier but the other three are good red red white and black all seem fantastic if your card is a foil it makes foil tokens now which is great this hand, this hand's obviously mana heavy, but this bow is going to turn the rest of these lands into creatures, ideally. Uh, it's in the uh, Magic Arena channel, J-Bags. We played a Grawl Blood Sun deck yesterday that was really sweet. How do I feel about bowing for five right now? Because if I hit Night Pack Ambusher, I get to uh I get to make a token. And if I hit Tolsmere, I get to fight this. I could also hit a Boreal Grazer. That's uh that's a legal one to hit. I don't want to play Tolsmear out into um I don't want to play Tolsmear out into Frilled Mystic Mana from this situation. <laughs> Dang it, game. Dang it, game. So, one of the other kind of neat little synergies in this deck, or soft combos. There, you saw the Cavalier there. Cavalier upgrades your Grazers into 3-3s, three which is really nice. So if you if you have the opportunity. Alright, don't stroke me. Rats, they have a stroke. They don't have a stroke and they're dead. Sweet. Sweet. I hope this deck ends up being competitive because this deck... I might have played a couple of games with this deck off stream the other night. This deck's kind of my jam. It's kind of, kind of my jam. It's just doing, it's doing just a bunch of the things that I love doing in Magic. Dexahoot, yep. Let's not, let's not joke about that one, HN. Do I like this more than Team Elementals? Yeah, this one, this one's more tricky than Team Elementals. I have no idea from a power level perspective which one's better, but this one, this one definitely plays the type of magic I like to play. I think this is a mulligan. It doesn't have double white. It doesn't have any early meaningful plays. It doesn't have any acceleration. This hand's much better. To throw planes back here. Hey, Moikar, thank you for thank you for the prime support. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. We do not have any double white cards outside of Cavalier's triple white. And the triple white might seem a little ambitious, but that card's effect is really powerful, and I want it in my deck to find with Arcbow. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Scholar. That's a, that's a great way to phrase why this deck seems good. It has a lot of effects that kill things when they come into play, but we're not really stretching the mana to do it. Very apt summary. Mighty Warrior, thank you for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. So I, I could have gotten greedy here. If I would have played Elf here and hit a land off the top of my deck like we did, I could have Toll Smeared on three, and maybe I should have done that. It's It's close. I think I like being conservative and using my mana. I would love to trade here if you attack, so. Ooh, that's a good one, yeah? Uh, I think we're going to see fireworks this evening with the kids. Declan asked to go see fireworks. Um, I, I'm not in charge of decisions like that, though, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna be streaming for another five or six hours, and then when I sign off, Christy will tell me what we're going to do for the day. You call it me? Hey, Herkin, thank you for gifting a sub. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a good one. Oh, I 
wish you could see your face when I was beating you. Yikes. Wonder how aggressive they're gonna get here. Hope hopefully they attack with this and Nightpack Ambusher gets to gobble it up. Come on. Yeah. All right. If we hit a land next turn, if we hit a land, Tolsmere's Wolf will eat this because of this buff, and then this will kill Domri. Come on. Untap land. Oh, never lucky. These Thorn Lieutenants might not be good in the main. Maybe, maybe they're just supposed to be Branch Walkers. I need to play the red matchup a bunch to know that, though. This is, this is definitely, uh, now Domri gets to kill this. This is definitely a card that's in here to help the red matchup. Hey, Waffles, thanks for the three month three sub. I appreciate the quarter of years. So this, this will fight this. And then we're probably too far behind at that point. Like my Tolsmere Wolves no longer kill a Spellbreaker. They get to draw another card here. I think, I think not hitting a, an untapped land this turn was kind of the death knell. Am I okay with this? I think I'm okay with this. I'm not, I'm not activating Thorn Lieutenant anytime soon. We're not in an, un, an, un, an unwinnable spot, but we're definitely behind. That's a pretty good one. Oh, have at it, boys. Yep. How aggressive do you want to be? Pretty aggressive. Not aggressive at all. Got it. Get it, got it good. This block might be a little too defensive. I'm trading this off there, though, because I want to play this other Toll Smear. The problem now is Domri gets to... We're, we're done at this point. They get to fight and draw another card. Yeah, if we would have, if we would have hit the whole, the whole game was about that sixth turn when we still didn't have our extra land, basically. And it's like mist there, and everything snowballed on us. Tristani's probably too slow. The body's not super relevant either. This is a nice big beefy boy that kills something. Uh, I think baffling is probably fine. Devout decree seems pretty good here. They've got a number of red cards. This seems reasonable. Devout, Devout Decree notably exiles e notably exiles Domri while also tagging a bunch of their various red dinos, which seems nice. The Thorn Lieutenant was Paradise Shred. Again, like there are there are a ton of different two drops you can put in there from Branch Walker to other accelerant. It just comes down to like, can is the red matchup good enough that I can afford to play a card that's bad in the red matchup? Like, when you look at the curve of this deck. And you think about like how its cards line up into things. The red matchup is the matchup I'm most worried about because my curve is pretty high at the top end. I don't have a ton of things early that impact the board. So by playing by playing Thorn Lieutenant in that two drop slot, I'm being conservative and hedging hedging that matchup. So like the people in chat, I agree. Like these games I played so far that. Paradise Druid would be much, much better, but that's only because we're not playing against Mono Red. And again, like, there's lots of bad brews and interesting deck ideas on the ladder right now, so there's much less Mono Red that I would see, like, in Mythic or in a tournament where I was worried about doing well playing against good decks.
So like, if you're someone who's playing this who wants to lose to Mono Red most of the time, by all means, you don't think you're gonna play against it, cut the cut the cut the Thor Lieutenants. The other, the other important thing to remember is that, like, the matchups where Thorn Lieutenant is good, those matchups gives you the least amount of chance to stumble. If you stumble against the red deck, you lose. The game is over. And Thorn Lieutenant gives you less of a chance to have that happen. Huh. I'm kind of surprised they made that a 3-3 against my Nightpack Ambusher deck. I think I'm just gonna like can trip this a game three with it, and then we'll use the night pack ambusher to eat this next turn inside of combat. In a blade of grass. All right, Thunderwunk. This is this is not the president's Twitter account. You just get to make shit up and then pass it off as facts here. From forty percent down to twenty percent. You want to spout nonsense statistics in my chat? You got to show your work. Don't just, don't just make up numbers. Don't, don't just make stuff up. Gotta, gotta do the homework. Yep. Red Rover, Red Rover, let Spellbreaker come over. Yeah, look at that. We put the fear ambusher in him. I think I'm just doing this. We'll have this eat this. It's also possible I should just pass here and hold up second Nightpack Ambusher because if they play Domri and have this fight here, if I have Nightpack Ambusher, they'd trade. Yeah, so they get to they get to eat this now. And draw another card. Are they going to eat Tulsmere? Thanks, Creepy. There's just, there's just so much misinformation on the internet that, like, it's just like, I get sick of looking at it. Wait, what? Uh, is this getting lava coiled? I'm confused. This, this has to be dying this turn, right? All right, all right, that, that makes sense. I understand now. Uh, I don't know who you're referring to as Big Dumbry. Not sure. Not sure who that is. Which which I'm not sure which Dumbry that is. I think I'm just passing here. Chaos is it four? Is four mana Dumbry Big Dumbry? Think I just take this hit here? Is it crazy to just take this hit? This is nine, I go to two. Yeah, there's a there's a six mana Domri too. That's why I was like, big Domri, I need I need clarification. Alright, so now now I'm gonna go to five. I'm gonna go to five. I mean, going to two is bad, but I think going to five is okay.
This does mean that dies to Lava Coil, which sucks, but is what it is. Don't play another threat. Stop it. Stop. Maybe it's something this can exile. Hopefully whatever they play this can exile. Nothing. Ooh, that's a good draw. All right, so. I really want to hit a land tier. So I think I'm going to do this. Describe before I play the Jade Light Ranger. Perfect. Uh, I guess I guess I wanted to hit an untapped land. Awkward. Oh, I have, I have land war elves. I have land war elves. This is fine. All right. So probably chumping and letting them draw a card here. And then next turn, I can play arc bow and bow for five. If the card I draw for the turn is a brick. Still trample. It does. All right. Dead to a bird spell. Listen, chat, some days you're the pigeon, other days, other days you're the statue. Some days you're the pigeon, other days you're the statue. Uh, Night Pack would have gained us six there and added seven power to the board. Cavalier would have killed one of their dinos and given us a four six. So we had uh, five really good hits in our deck. Uh, Tristani would have been fine as well, but those were those were the two good ones. Was uh, Cavalier and uh, and Night Pack. It's just how it goes sometimes. Night Pack would have gained six because Tolsmere gains you three life whenever a wolf comes into play. You think the Cavaliers are overcosted? I think the Cavaliers are incredibly powerful. They're very, very good and reasonable cards. Hey, Trax, thanks for the host. Hope you had a good stream this morning. Oh, I cast Arc Bow. Yeah, okay, sorry. You're right, it would've just gave me three. Would, it have been, would that have been good enough then? I guess it was just Cavalier then. Good call. Um, I think it's the Black Cavalier is my favorite. Both, both the white and red ones have been good too, though. Get a get a rematch against Scroll. Oh, feather maybe? Yeah, smells like smells like feather. I think we're gonna go. Vivian down tick play second elf tear it down tear it all down yeah blood for blood for bones is really sweet with the cavalier Uh, we played a green-black aggro deck the other day that the Cavaliers felt, felt like it felt pretty well into. I'm going to go ahead and block here. Means I can't cast this just yet, but that's fine.
Yeah, maybe I should have killed this with the Cavalier here. It's very, very possible. So do I want to Cavalier? I think I'm just letting this happen. I think I'm probably Cavaliering the Feather here. I guess I could Night Pack and get that going. Nah, I think I just want to do this and just take this off the table. This card's real scary. Yeah, yeah, the, the Naya Feather Deck got a lot of really good upgrades in this last set. None of those are the Tool Smear I was really looking for. I think I'm going to grab Jade Light here and then dig for some lands. And get the get the arc bow going. This has vigilance, so we get to play offense and defense here, which is nice. The season season of growth is interesting in feather because it gives you another card that's like feather adjacent. So like when you don't have feather, it's also absurd with your spells the target. Yep. If they hit anything that lets them target now, they're gonna kind of, kind of, kind of combo off. Yep. We could, we could be dead here, and not dead this turn, but they could, they could run away with this game very quickly. Yeah, one, one mana, scry one, draw three, give this a power, give this a counter. Like, it's pretty good. Naya, Naya Feather's definitely on the list of decks I want to get to. This is uh, another matchup where that card that um, exiles a red creature is good, which is sweet. Gross. Draw two, kill your thing, make my thing bigger. Yep. Just gonna take this hit here. We're, we're probably dead here. Not having not having any like realish removal game one is pretty pretty rough for us here. You fight like a city brat. Like they'd have to be incredibly unfortunate to not like have something that ends up being lethal. I guess I guess this gives me the chance to. I have one. I have one more cavalier in my deck. But Feather, Feather's really good against decks that don't interact, game one. Huh? This technically gives me a string of blockers. There's a good chance it just like gets, uh, gets reckless raged. Yep. Morning Black. Maybe they'll deck themselves. They have 44 cards. Think they're going to be okay? We have another Dumbrys ambush here. Smells like it.
Yeah, season, seasonal growth does a lot. It works. It does something with both halves of your deck, right? It does something with your spells that target, and it does something with your, uh... Yeah, we're, we're super dead. That was impressive. The opponent mulligan to five that game, and just, like, got seasonal growth online, and then hit their first spell, and just, like, was off to the races. Now, post-board, things definitely get a lot better for us, which is not hard, considering how bad that matchup is game one. You get to bring in a bunch of cards that allow us to be interactive here, which is nice. Again, Thorn Lieutenant leaving a bit to be desired. Maybe I just want Baffling End in my main deck instead of Thorn Lieutenant. I could. I could see that. I don't think I want Bratzadod. I think just Knight of Autumn is fine. Yeah, probably. As always, if you're interested in, hey, will Jeff play X, always use the deck submission form on my website. I'll send you an email back letting you know if it's okay or not. I feel like this card's probably not very good here. I have a hard time defending it on a lot of board states, I think. That makes it so using my health total as a resource becomes a little bit awkward. This seems fine. Uh, we've not really played against much Esper, which is what Veil of Summer is intended for, so I don't really have a good a good line on whether or not it's been reasonable. One mana one mana like draw a card being the floor is like pretty good though. One mana one mana counter your thought 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 erasure draw card is like not bad. What's a good creature count for bow as far as math goes? I don't know, 20 plus? And like, the other thing is too, like, that's a nuanced question, right? It's not just like, what's a good creature count? It's like, what's a good hit count, right? Because like, our Arboreal Grazer and Land War Elves are technically creatures, but like, you don't want to hit them when you bow for six, right? Like, that's really bad. Maybe I do want to keep this and I want to get rid of this in a land. Because this is this is like technically card disadvantage, right? Let's do, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and that's, and that's what the London Mulligan does, right? Like, it allows it so, like, the number, the, how, how often you get to say, well, at least this is a good five is, like, pretty, pretty significant. God, if we had a Toll Smear here, we'd have been so well off, but we didn't, so we're probably gonna die. Hey, Puno, thank you for the brand new Prime support. Welcome, welcome. We're having a fantastic Thursday. Johef, thank you for the five buns. Yeah, Krenko, Krenko's an interesting one. I wonder if they're, like, not playing Spellbreaker then. I feel like you'd run out of room for threes if you tried to play both of those. All right, I think I messed this game up. I think I, I think I should have played this as a four power card on turn two. I'm gonna hold on to this last land because uh, because I could draw a bow and discard it to the bow. Yeah, I think I think I made a mistake by not playing this out much sooner. Just gonna move on to the next one. I mean, you're not really playing more protection spells for Krenko. Like, any, any copies of God's Willing are replacing, like, the protection one mana spell. So, like, you're not really playing more cards of it. The reason why Cranko is bad is because there's a lot of decks in this format that gum up the board state. And Cranko can't attack into a gummed up board state. Uh, yeah, we played Black Green Shapeshift yesterday morning. As always, you can find everything that we've streamed on my YouTube channel and my website.
the elk. Thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. M20 did actually introduce some new pirates. Um, there is a 1-1 one, one flying flash pirate for one blue that you can pay for to draw a card. And there's a 2-1 pirate with flash that went up for two that whenever you cast a spell on your opponent's turn, it gets plus one, plus one, plus one counter. We actually have blue black pirates in my deck queue that we're gonna play later. Uh, you click on your portrait, Brad. I assume we're going to trade two for one here, but I think that's fine. If we draw a Tulsmear and get this bow back, these lands will turn into something useful, which would be nice. We also just draw another bow. I'll probably play out like these two and then start holding planes from there. Our, our average card quality almost certainly higher than the opponents at a, point, at a point in the game like this. Yeah, I, I posted uh, in the standard channel on the subs discord a draft of Sultai Flash that had the new Flash Wolf that we're playing in this deck and the, and the new two mana Flash Pirate. Felt pretty okay. Well, you know, let's, let's race. Yeah, you got him. Yeah, they've got, they've got a couple lands. Mmm, Grey Ogre. It's exciting. How's the new standard bet? Elementals feels surprisingly competitive. I was not I was not expecting elementals to be good, but the new the new coiling elemental and omnath are both pretty sweet. Night pack, night pack ambusher is kinda of my jam. I want this card to be good real bad, so I'm sure it's not going to be. We've got huge tracts of land, you know, the huge. All right, let's just, let's just attack with this and then six them a bunch. If they want to attack with both of these, I'll, I can trade. Got so many scoundrels, chat. Uh, I have no idea. We only played like, we played like five or six matches with it. Number, the number of matches you need to get in with something to like fully understand how it works in magic is huge, especially in a format like this where there's like half a dozen or even a dozen different decks that you can expect to play in any given tournament. Like, to even begin to get a feel for how a given matchup plays out, you probably need to play it, like, close to a dozen times. So that means to get a feel for a deck against a field as big as this, you need to log, like, double digits worth of matches. Okay. 
So they'll block plus shoot me. I mean, to be fair, we've been talking about the Thorn Lieutenants being underwhelming. While this isn't like a tiered aggro deck, aggro matchups like this are the place where Thorn Lieutenant is good. Like, it's fine here. Are we on the front page? I have no idea. Twitch, Twitch doesn't tell me when it randomly throws me on the front page. Then, then we are. Welcome, welcome to folks dropping in from the front page of Twitch. All right, so smaller aggro deck. I want to bring in my pieces of removal so that we can be a little bit more interactive, like get rid of their thing, for instance, that was taking my spell away. Um, Bronthon is a 3-4, is probably fine. They probably don't have any troublesome permanents that I really need to kill with this, so I can go ahead and pull that. If they do have artifacts or enchantments, Bronthon covers that. Jostani Discordant's a good piece of top end because it's just worth, like, a lot of their cards all at once. I think I want to cut Vivian Champion of the Wilds. Against an aggressive deck, I probably have a hard time keeping her alive a lot of the time. Um, trim at least one arc bow, but leaving some of these in to convert resources that are bad late game into something potentially useful is good. Hey, J Bags, thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Love being able to connect to YouTube and check out all the cool new decks, even if I didn't have time to catch the stream. Thanks for the content. Thanks for the prime, similar. I appreciate that. Silmar. I'm going to trim a couple of uh, Jade Light Rangers. That seems fine. Let's give that a go. You have a lot of other things that do something similar, though, Tantrum. Like, Toll Smear creates multiple bodies, etc. Like, Vivian's not an individually powerful card, and I think I want to focus on things that are individually powerful to start. So, if I didn't draw this land on the first turn, I think I would lead on Land War Elves, so I guaranteed have three mana on turn two, assuming they don't have a removal spell. But because I did draw this land, this guarantees that I get my extra mana, because like here, with the Fanatical Firebrand, had I led on Elves, I wouldn't have my third mana, right? Like, they would have been able to shoot it. Now the question is, do I want to guarantee my Elves' safety by baffling in this Firebrand? I kind of think I do, right? Like, I don't have another land in my hand that I've got, like, a 5-drop and a 4-drop. So, having this survive to be able to uh, cast this next turn, or possibly even this, seems potentially very good. So, this will be able to sacrifice to deal a point of damage to my face, but it means the, means the elf is more likely to be safe. I don't want to get a cheeky attack for 0 here, because they, they likely have haste cards in their deck and they like to be able to block. Ooh... Choose a creature type. Creatures you control, the chosen type, get 1-1. One, one. Look at the top three cards. So the top three cards of your library, you may reveal a creature card of the chosen type and put it into your hand. Interesting. I think I'm just night packing here. It's a little awkward because I'm, I'm, I am going to cast a spell on my next turn, so I'm not going to get immediate extra value onto this, but just like 4-4 four, for four, 4 sounds fine into this board. And let's play a Tristani. Tristani, Tristani means that the Night Pack Ambusher no longer dies to uh, Lava Coil, which is nice. So it's gained a fifth point of toughness. Now Tristani can die to Lava Coil, but that's fine because it leaves my other threats around. Dire Fleet Poisoner. We activated their trap card, chat. Would you like to trade? Ooh, you just want to eat my grazer instead of... Okay. Okay. I think I'm just passing here. 
I don't really care about decreeing this. As a Boreal Grazer is going to hang out in my hand to discard an Arcbow next turn. We're kind of, we're kind of at a standstill. It's an interesting standstill because like this gives them some long-term card advantage, but I've got Night Pack and Arcbow going, so I feel like we also have some long-term advantage. That's aggressive. Double block there. Take one effectively, because I'm gonna take five, gain four, because these tokens lifelink. And that's fine. Them, them, them using a, a burn spell on that feels fantastic. With the, uh, if we are not incredibly unlucky, this arc bow is gonna do some good work here. Ditch the grazer. Dig, dig, dig. We get to find a Toll Smear here. And the Toll Smear Wolf is going to come into play as a 5 5 and eat the Dire Fleet Neckbreaker. And then I technically didn't cast a spell this turn. So, end step my pack ambusher is going to make a wolf, which will gain three and kill the, the poisoner. My girlfriend had put pillows for the first time yesterday. She wanted me to thank the person who introduced me to the cake shake. It really is good stuff. Yeah, that felt, that felt pretty reasonable. All right, let's try one more with this one before we roll on to some Pride Mate aggro. Yeah, one, two, three, three to four more decks I want to try and get through today. If you're a new viewer to the channel, welcome. My name is Jeff Hogan. We play a ton of different constructed magic and other strategy games on this channel. We play a ton of different decks every day when we're streaming magic, and all those decks listed in the title are the order we're planning to play other things today. We usually play each deck for somewhere between 60 minutes and two hours. If you see a sweet deck coming up that you're unable to catch live, be sure to check out my YouTube channel and or my website, magicesports.net, to uh, catch the replays there. Everything gets cut up and posted there later this evening after I'm done streaming. To Boeing on main phase instead of on their turn. Yeah, when I have Nightpack Ambusher in play, if I find Tulsmear like I did there, Finding, um, finding Tulsmear lets the Night Pack Ambusher's Wolf gain three and fight something. It also allowed me to find Tulsmear to kill their blockers so I can make a profitable attack that turn. I think I just want to Arc Bow here. Maybe I just want to Vivian. Let's Vivian. I have double arc bows, so like I'm not, I'm less worried about like a thought erasure on that. He's gonna start generating some card advantage. Card advantage, he says as he draws a land war elf. They've got a whole lot of nothing going on. Do 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 do. You know what? Maybe I should have played Jade Light Ranger first there, so I could do Jade Light and Elf this turn. That's true. We did put a bunch of bad cards in the bottom, which is like not the worst. Yeah, I agree, Squishy. This deck's playing a lot of different value creatures. It's got a lot of good tools for various matchups. I think the couple of matches we lost today, we hit kind of the bad end of variance and I made some bad decisions. It's like just tricky enough to keep me personally happy, which is what I ultimately look for. I'm just, I just want to play tricky decks that make me happy. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the Black Red Aristocrats deck we're going to play later today has three mana Chandra in it. Card seems great for that archetype. I would love a Nightpack Ambusher. Thank you for asking. Maybe I'm supposed to play Jade Light to try and draw a land there. I don't know. I'm probably just going to jam the Nightpack Ambusher. Not playing the creature out proactively makes me better against Kaya's Wrath. Bell Haunt. Um, yeah, that's fine, right? Let's 
So this means I cast a spell this turn, which is a little sad, so I don't get a freebie at end of turn. But this wolf is a 4-4, which lets it eat this, so definitely, definitely in for that. Have you ever lost a if they have, I, I don't know why I gave the one that couldn't attack Vigilance, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Bant Walls deck we played to start today was quite excellent. It's probably in the running for deck of the day. As always, remember at the end of it, at the end of my workday when things are posted on YouTube, um, there's a videos favorites page on my website where I always pull out the decks that stood out to me each day. I've not played Black White Vampires. Everything that we've played will be on the videos page. Everything that we have coming up to play will be on the deck queue page. Yeah, I could have, but then I wouldn't get an attack in. Are we spending removal killing my things? That would be lovely. This deck doesn't seem to, can you, can you elaborate? Can you explain why my deck that gets to play at largely instant speed doesn't seem resilient against sorcery speed wraths? Why my deck that plays cards that make multiple creatures in the same card doesn't seem resilient against sorcery speed wraths? Cards, cards that create multiple bodies in one card tend to be excellent against wraths because they have to spend a wrath to kill one thing for you. Nah, Tefri's dead. He ain't got nothing to say. Only time will tell. Maybe I should have just cast uh, cast a creature in response to the Tefri. It's very possible. No, Magic Magic Arena um, has serious performance issues after after the patch the other day. I am not going to sit this one out. Just massive, massive amounts of lag. Kill you. I've heard I've heard people complain after every patch about performance issues, but. This is this latest patch was they were they were worse than I've ever experienced. Like I have a, I have a pretty high end computer. Like I've got I've got an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, a, a 1080 GTX, and like it's still getting frame rate drop, which is really really bad. Uh, Bant walls this morning was really good recharger. Throw more money at your computer to fix it. Yep. Veil Veil of Summer pretty sweet here. Counters blue and black spells basically. As you said that, my arena crashed. Yikes. I think this is how I want to sideboard. A Boreal Grazer doesn't attack or block. I don't really need the extra acceleration in a matchup like this. I don't think Knight of Autumn's good enough. I have Cavalier to cover artifacts and enchantments in a pinch if I need to anyways. This is fine because when Tefri bounces it, you get a 1-1 token left over. They don't really have Black Planeswalkers to exile with Devout Decree. I'm like tagging things like Bell Haunt isn't very useful. The best part about playing the Bant deck is you don't have to cast mana for any of your spells because the Rakdos pay for all your walls to be built. It's like not amazing, but fine.
This deck feels like it could be competitive if the standard metagame allows for it to get its foot in the door. The next game will be more telling when they aren't stumbling and if they can survive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, let's try and sneak this in. I guess, I guess casting this is less good if they have Tefri. Maybe, maybe I'm just supposed to play Thorn Lieutenant there. I think I'm gonna play this and play a tapped land and attack for one. I don't I don't wanna shock and extend into Akaya's Wrath too badly here. Like if if they have wrath, they might just wrath these two creatures, which is like a win for me. If they play Bell Haunt, I'll probably ditch Thorn Lieutenant and then untap and cast Tristani. If they just pass the turn with mana up, I'm gonna shock in a land and then attack with Thorn Lieutenant and leave five mana up to activate the Arc Bow. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about this deck. And even in matchups like this, especially where your opponent has a lot of things that they're leaving up, we also get to have a lot of different decision points on how we can sequence with things. They are playing Excellence Binding, okay? Uh, I think this is our first Esper matchup of the day, if I if I recall correctly. So this, so this is the, do you have Kaya's Wrath? If yes, you're casting it. They've uh, taken some of our decisions away here. You expect any changes on Monday? Nope. I expect them to talk about why why they don't need to change anything in Modern, though. They they said point blank that they think the current standard format is healthy, so I'd be very surprised if they changed anything there. And they basically, God, the frame rate lag is so bad. All right, I guess I'm gonna bring in some Knights of Autumn for the, for the third game. Even, even if they don't have Excellence Binding, Knight of Autumn still a 4-3 for three, 3. No, it does not. I mean, like, just from a, from a factual perspective, we don't know what Standard looks like technically at the moment, Funderwunk. Like, the format, the, the set's been released for, like, three days. So like anybody anybody speaking with certainty of what they what the current standard format looks like is just like speaking from their posterior by and large. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to cut maybe I'm supposed to cut Tristani there instead of uh instead of Thorn 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 Lieutenant. Except for Zach. Uh I guess I'm gonna lead on forest in case they duress me on one. Cause if they duress me, I can veil a summer and like shocking in the temple garden later doesn't really matter. Cause my health total is pretty relevant to this matchup. Yeah, I bet I bet that's true, Batman. The fact that the decks are physically physically ah! Ah! Get out of my hand. Nobody loves you, Thought Erasure. That it makes me it makes me feel something on a visceral level, chat. I just I just I need it, okay? I need it. Play the Team Elementals last night, minus a few big chargers I didn't have, and remember that magic is very fun. It really is very fun. All right, the second one I'll resolve. That's fine. I'll give you, I'll give you that one. Yikes! Yikes! All right, looking for looking for an arc bow. <laughs> Hopefully they cast another Thought Erasure. I know my responsibility. I'll protect you. What incredibly interesting and stimulating game of Magic the Gathering. What? What an incredibly interesting and stimulating turn. 
Such interest, much wow. I want to play the Toll Smear out of my hand before I play the Toll Smear out of here, because I would like I would like the Toll Smear in my hand is exposed to discard spells. Why not gain life with the knight? Because if I gain life with the knight, there's a chance they don't bounce it. So I want to I want to force them to make that play. My health total again ultimately doesn't really matter. In the rid we trust. Thank you for the 12 months of support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one. All right, that's good for me. If they don't have a cast down. Oh, cast down doesn't even do it, right? Because neither of uh, these are both legendary. Tear it down. Tear it all down. Tear it all down. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth, Vivian Reed? Her her saying tear it all down while we attack two Esper Planeswalkers to death is just like, like, yep, yeah, this is exactly what's currently happening. We are tearing it all down. Wonderful see Oath kill my planeswalker here. Nice, Pinky. That's sweet. Yeah, Underlords, Underlords is a lot of fun. Starting uh, next week, I'm going to be including under, Underlords in my regular schedule. How close to lethal is that? So this would be 4, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17. I get attack for 18 if I keep that there. All right. All right. Upper operation. They are gaining three, but upper operation two turn lethal is a go. I repeat, operation two turn lethal is a go. Oh no! They drew the black source. Chat. Does does them drawing the second black source change operation two turn lethal? Cheddar is no cheese. Thank you for the five months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I think it does. So before making them have it was better because they needed the Black Source and the Kaya's Wrath. Yeah, it's still two turns, but it's worse. Our, our two turns is worse against spot removal, if that makes sense. Blue to newbie. Thank you for the four-month reset. Welcome back. I'm electing to play Tristani rather than Tolsmere here, even though Tolsmere is slightly more power, because I just want to get my hand empty against their Thought Erasure deck. So they can't they can't Thought Erasure these because they're not spells. Yep. All right, so they're going to take two here, and we're going to gain two. Tefri's going to die. I don't think I can afford to play around another sweeper. We'll, like, hold the elf just in case, but good chance we're just, we're just branched by another Kaius Wrath here. Do you have two Wraths and 17 cards? Always. Never, never not. And then the Sertres can't uh, Yep. Cavalier. All right. Well, you know. You get to play bow and maybe do stuff next turn. What's Underlords like? The best way I can describe Underlords is it's what, would it, what the game would be if a uh, deck building game and a PvP tower defense game teamed up. If you if you're someone who enjoys card games, you would likely enjoy Underlords a whole heck of a lot. So they know Arcbow's coming up and they bend the veto. So that means when they don't play this Tefri here, it means they have a counter spell for this, right? I think I think we're dead at this point. Dab City, thank you for the tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Wow, that just happened. All right, well, I wasn't um, I wasn't prepared for that to resolve, but that's my out. My out. My out is that card resolving.
Spin to win. Eh, I mean, like, that's technically lethal. I've got it. They could have Thought Erasure. You can get Dig for Thought Erasure, but Thought Erasure... They need a way to not die to the Thorn Lieutenant, right? I think I'm supposed to send this here because sending this here, this is still lethal, right? Because they're going to go to seven from this trigger and then this is six and this is one. So I think, I think I'm supposed to take the Tefri off the table. Wow. Wow. I am so confused by their sequence of plays. And again, like, that's, that's another thing that's like, it's like, well, uh, we often talk about don't focus on the match results. And that's a good example why, right? Like, we won that match, but if my opponent sequences better there and, like, keeps the veto, we probably can't win that, right? So, like, just looking at the raw score to determine what matchups actually look like in terms of percentages, I'm not sure is a great thing to be to be doing. Uh, yeah, the Aristocrats deck is something that's going to be coming up later today, I think, three decks from now. And if you want to see the deck list that we're going to be playing, as always, you can find it in the deck queue on my website. Um, yeah, I guess it's been a while since I've shilled, and... Uh, Restarting the client, I don't know if it really helps. As far as this deck's concerned, I think I'm happy with where we ended. I don't think there's any changes I'd make. If you're looking for something to play Vivian's Arc Bow, and I think this deck's a lot of fun, and I've been I've been enjoying it a lot. While we restart Arena, I would just like to say good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for dropping by here today. Welcome. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic and other strategy games 30, 40, something even 50 hours a week on release weeks like this. If you remember, if you're a new viewer and enjoying the content, make sure you hit that follow button. It doesn't cost you anything. and lets you know when I go live and with what. As always, I'd love to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in day out without their support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my sponsors here really quick. The Vitamin String Quartet. It creates unique instrumental string arrangements, everything from Zelda to Zeppelin. And they would love to underscore your next gaming session. You can find them streaming now on services such as Spotify and Apple Music. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of artwork that they already have on their website, such as my own Hoaglandia branded merchandise. And of course, cool stuff, Ink.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on all of your TCG purchases there with them. All right, we're diving on in to the next deck here. We got some Pride Mate Aggro. So we had. In the latest set, a new Ajani Planeswalker that actually down ticks to make Ajani Pride Mate tokens. Let's take a peek at what this deck is doing. Let me post it in the subs discord really quick here. Mana, mana base is nice and clean in this one. If we have, if we have our lands, we'll be able to cast our spells. Hey, Wikester, thanks for the 10 months of support. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a fantastic